Hi everybody, thanks for tuning in. Today we will be um, painting this little cat. And while I do that, I am going to talk about artist imposter syndrome, because that's something I can talk about, because it just, I harbor it deep inside my brain. And I know many artists do, and I just would like to share my thoughts on it. So first of all, what is imposter syndrome? Imposter syndrome is, generally speaking, and I am describing this in my own terms, um, when you don't feel worthy of something, of a certain title or description, when you feel like a fraud, like you're lying to people and you don't deserve this title. And for artists it seems to be quite common, and I've wondered why that is, and I think the reason is that it's so difficult to measure art. You can't really measure it. And it's very closely tied to matters um, such as taste. What I find to be art may not be art to someone else, and what somebody else um, would define as art is probably not art in my book. So it's very, very hard to say what it is and what you need to be an artist. Do you have to have years and years of experience? Do you have to have an art education? Do you have to sell your work? Do you have to be well known for what you do? So those are all questions that can be answered for other occupations, but not really for artsy stuff because it's just something that a lot of people love and a lot of people do as a hobby and it's very hard to draw a line between it being a hobby and being more serious. Um, so I thought about, we all know the negative effects of it, I'm guessing, but I thought about what are the positive sides of imposter syndrome? What is good about it? And I think it has a few advantages in that, first of all, it's quite a human, normal reaction. And the positive thing to me is, first of all, if you say you have imposter syndrome, that to me makes you instantly more likable because you're a human being and, uh, well, you're not a snob, first of all, and you see um, where your place is. Maybe you don't see it as accurately as others do, but at least you know that there's still stuff for you to learn. And you know that there are people um, who have mastered things better than you have, which is why you probably don't feel worthy. Um, and it can be a catalyst, it can be a motivator to learn more and improve and have role models and just, I guess, um, have goals and, and have something to reach for. So that's the positive thing about it. But it becomes negative when it becomes crippling. Like when you stop making art because you feel you're not worthy. Or when you hide what you do because maybe you're ashamed of it. Um, you feel you can't talk about it. That's not a way to live if you're really passionate about something. You want to talk about it and it's a part of you and you want to show it and express it. So I don't think that's healthy to um, try to keep it a secret. And I think another reason why some people don't talk about their art hobby or art side hustle or art passion, whatever it is to them, is because they don't necessarily make money from it or they don't make much money from it. And that leads me to thinking about what defines an artist. Like, why would you feel that you cannot call yourself an artist if you create art, whereas somebody else does not have a problem with it? And there are people who um, don't have imposter syndrome, I believe. And maybe it's because they're very, very advanced in their skill or they've, they've really spent a long time. Um, honing their skill 
and that's fine if they reach that level of confidence. But I feel that most artists do not do not have that. Oh wow, look at me, I'm the greatest. Um, which is not a healthy <laughs> way to think anyway, but it's more along the lines of, oh, I'm so useless and I'm a failure. And oftentimes it's because it's hard to make money from art. And then again, when you think about things that have made money, honestly, that's not always the best art, at least not in my opinion. Um, generally, people who are not art connoisseurs or they just don't think about art as much they will like certain things and that's probably the majority of the population they will like um, certain color schemes they will like certain themes um, certain sceneries and those will have success like that's where your marketing will be quite easy and that's where there's a possibility to make money easily. Does that mean that everybody else um, who's a bit more special, who likes darker colors, who likes uh, more difficult subjects, does that mean that they're not artists? Of course not. So it's not, first of all, it's not related to the money you make. And second of all, it, does, it is not related to whether you're famous or not. You all know how <laughs> there have been artists who were absolute geniuses and we only found out about them after their death. Um, and I'm sure there are many, many people who make art that's amazing and don't have a YouTube channel and don't even feel the need to show anyone. And of course, they're artists just as much as anybody else. So. Who is an artist? When do you call yourself an artist? And this is just my own personal opinion, so feel free to argue with me, <laughs> or if you can think of other points um, that would make an artist, please let me know in the comments. But to me, an artist is somebody who creates art, who has a certain skill level and who spends a certain amount of time or dedicates a certain amount of time with art or to art. And that in itself includes a wide range of artists, of age groups, of skill sets and things like that. But in general, I think you do have to have quite an interest in art that you spend quite a bit of your time reading about it, thinking about it, um, spending your extra money on art supplies. Like, it has to be somewhat important to you. I don't think you can be an artist if it's completely unimportant to you. I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong. And I also believe that, of course, you have to be able to make art, but it I don't think that it means you have to be making art right now because artist block is very real and every artist has it. I think it's impossible not to ever have it. Um, and it's very normal and probably very healthy for your process. So people take breaks and people have taken huge breaks like 10 year breaks or 15 year breaks. There are probably still artists, but life just got in the way they were busy, they had other responsibilities to deal with. So I'm not saying that if you're not super productive, then you're not an artist. But the, the act of making something definitely differentiates you, between you being an artist and just being an art lover. And the third point was that you probably should have a certain level of skill. And I know this is probably arguable because there is a quote unquote art out there that consists of a banana taped to the wall with duct tape. I, I personally would not call that art because to me, skill and the craft of it is, is important. <laughs> Some people do. To me, it's more of a marketing thing, more of a sensation than 
art as I would define it, but somebody else might have a different opinion. But I believe that talent exists, and I do believe that some people have more talent than others. Still, both can make art. But some just have to work a little harder to get to a certain level. And the reason why I say this is not because I want to discourage anybody from creating art, even if they're a beginner. That's the exact opposite of what I'm trying to say. I'm saying that if you're a beginner and you enjoy it, then keep working on it and you will get better. And that's what makes you an artist. Um, but I feel that calling everybody an artist just to be like politically and not even politically correct but just nice um, and you can see that a lot happening a lot with young children where we're just happy with everything they make because we're trying to be supportive and we're trying to be very positive and push them to continue on with their ho hobby that they love um, so we call them little artists and I personally think that's not good for them because First of all, it makes them complacent, or it could make them complacent, and say, okay, I have it down, I know what to do, I'm good at this, without practice I don't have to put in any effort. And the second reason is that we, well, we take away their motivation to learn more, I guess, because they don't think they need it, and we're also kind of insulting their intelligence because they're capable of making more and better. And why should we not encourage them and say, wow, that's really nice. But, you know, I noticed that you could work on this or that. However, you would phrase that according to the age group that you're talking to. But that's why I don't think it's good to call everybody an artist. And I don't necessarily um, like it when people call me artist right away just because I created something. I don't think that that's enough, but I can see where they're coming from and what their intentions are. I just think that taking art seriously means that you probably have a certain standard and you, you're not just happy with anything that you see. So I would like to replace the word um, imposter syndrome with artist humility that we just stay humble and we look up to our I'll just call them superiors um, and learn from them but not put ourselves down either and that we stay at it and that we continue learning it's a lifelong process and sometimes you have to fake it till you make it on the other hand, you will never make it in art. Never. I mean, whatever point you reach, there will always be more to learn and room to improve. So why put yourself down? Why not be proud of what you do? I mean, like I said, if somebody can uh, tape a banana with duct tape to a wall and call that art, why should you not call <laughs> whatever you do art? Um, it's a state of mind, really. It's how you think about it. I think there are people who create things for years and years and they're not necessarily artists. To me, it's I compare it to like sewing or crochet. I can follow instructions for a crochet project and just do whatever it tells me, the pattern tells me. I would not call that art. Now, once I infuse my own ideas and I come up with my own patterns and I tweak things here and there and I change them, that's when the artistic process begins for me so i think it's really really hard to say what is and what is not art because it's so subjective and so different from person to person all i can say is if you love it keep doing it and be an artist and say it but don't stop learning don't think you know it all people are probably not gonna like you that much anyway then <laughs> um and just be proud. We should be proud. We're um, doing something that's important to humanity, although it sometimes gives us no gratification in terms of finances. 
and we still do it and that means that it's important not just to us but to everybody else so that being said i hope you have a wonderful week and hopefully i will see you again next week take care stay safe and see you soon